everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're talking all about wave interactions. So the first one we're going to get to is reflection. And reflection is just the bouncing back of a ray of light, sound, or heat when the ray hits a surface it doesn't go through. So here is just a surface uh, of some sort, it doesn't even really matter you guys, a ray of light is going to shine down on it and it's going to reflect back out. Now the cool thing about this is the angle that it comes in is the angle that it leaves out at, okay? So if I was to measure this angle right here, we call this the angle of incidence, it's going to be the same angle or congruent, right? to the angle out, which is gonna be our angle of reflection. So it's gonna be absolutely the same angle. Now, some examples in real life of this, if we're thinking about a light ray, um, we can look at a mirror and we can see the light reflecting um, our faces, right? If you're thinking about sound, you can see sound or hear sound rather, um, being reflected in the form of an echo, okay? So it can reflect off a surface into our ear and we can hear it as an echo. Our next one that we're gonna look at is refraction. And refraction is when a wave changes direction and speed as it passes from one medium into another. And I know this word medium kind of gets some people stuck. So let's talk about medium for a second. Remember, it's just um, what type of particle the substance is traveling through in this, in this example, waves, right? So um, what kind of medium or particle matter is the wave actually traveling through? So we're gonna look at a quick example. We have a piece of glass and around our glass, we have air. So we have two forms of medium, right? Air and glass. Um, and our light is gonna shine through the air and it's going to get to our glass. And light travels pretty fast through air, you guys. There's not a whole lot of particles. It's, it's not dense, right? So there's, there's not a whole lot of particles for it to meander through. When it gets to glass though, glass is a solid and it's pretty densely packed of particles. So it's going to actually slow down. And when it does that, it's gonna change direction. And we call that refraction okay so that slowing down and that bending as it enters a new medium is called refraction um, now when it goes from glass again to air it's going to speed up again okay because now it's going into that low dense area where um, it doesn't take as long to travel through those particles in air like it does in glass in real life we see refraction happen um, in prisms to make rainbows um, including our uh, water droplets in the sky after it rains. It will make that beautiful display of a rainbow. It will take in the white light from the sun. It will fan it out into the different wavelengths and you will see it form a rainbow. I do have a video on how that is done, you guys, about the science of rainbows if you wanna watch it. Another quick example is going to be a straw. When you put a straw in a glass, um, it appears to bend, right? But your straw didn't really bend, you guys, okay? So it's not like magic. You put it in and automatically bends. It's not that way. It's actually just an illusion or a trick of the eye because the light is the one that's bending and slowing down, not the straw, okay? So it's refracting. Our next one that we get to is diffraction, um, and that's when a wave bends around an edge or spreads through an opening. So here you have a barrier, right? And it has an opening, and our wave is gonna come at it. So you can see here our wave is, and each one of these lines are gonna just represent the crest of our wave, all right? So you can see it's traveling this direction. And as soon as the wave hits this opening, it's going to diffract and bend. So it's gonna bend around it and it's gonna go outward um, and form a diffraction. So real life examples, if you are um, at the corner of a building, right? So here we have a brick building, you're at the corner of it. You can actually hear what's happening on the other side of the brick building because the sound waves will actually diffract around that building and you can hear what's going on on the other side even though you can't see it, all right? Um, another good example is light. Light actually diffracts through openings in doors as well in the same manner. Um, okay, next one up is gonna be interference and there's two types of interference, constructive and destructive. We're gonna talk about constructive interference first. And that's just when two waves come together to create a larger amplitude. Um, essentially, it makes a larger wave, right? So we have two waves here, and they are gonna form this bigger wave. Now, the thing that's important about constructive interference is that your crests have to line up with the next crest. So if one crest is coming, one crest is coming, they have to line up and then hit each other to form a larger amplitude just like that. Same thing happens for the troughs. The troughs will line up, and they'll make a larger trough, okay? Um, essentially, 
making our amplitudes much longer. Um, so if we're talking sound waves, we just got much louder, right? So here are some examples in real life. Uh, a chorus singing in harmony, right? When they sing at the same time, you'll have those crests and crests match up and make a bigger amplitude. Therefore, um, all of their vocals sound much louder, right? And then for just a plain mechanical wave, you can look at a tsunami, right? Um, tsunamis form when those crests meet crests and it forms this giant wave um, and that's a great example of just a mechanical wave creating constructive interference. Now if you look at destructive interference, it's when two waves come together and create a smaller amplitude, so completely the opposite of constructive interference, right? So now we're bringing two waves together but they're not lined up anymore. Instead, a crest is going to meet a trough, right? So when that happens, it's like Whoop, and it kind of like makes no wave or a very small wave, okay? So you're gonna see it look something like this. Um, in this case, we have a crest meeting a trough. And when that happens, when they're exact, exactly the same size, it will cancel it out. It will be no disturbance. In other words, no wave occurring. But when you have them and they're different sizes, one's a large wave, one's a smaller wave, what's gonna happen is you're still gonna have that destructive interference, but now, you're just gonna create a smaller amplitude or in fact, a smaller wave altogether, okay? Now, some um, examples. The one that you guys probably know the most about is noise canceling headphones, right? So what happens when you put those on and turn it on, it will actually create destructive interference for any sound waves that are coming at you. It will go ahead and counteract those crest trough, crest trough, right? And it will silence um, the, all of the noise for your ears, which is pretty amazing. And I wanted to show you this example. Think of this like water. It's just very easy if you think of it like water and dropping like two stones into a pond, okay? So we dropped a stone here and we dropped a stone here and they formed this pink and green um, little ripple effect from those stones being dropped. Now, we know as a ripple forms, it will form the crests and troughs naturally, right? Now, when they start overlapping, we will get constructive interference, crests and crests, right? So I went ahead and I drew lines where these crests and crests are actually meeting. So you can see it forming this constructive interference where we're getting larger amplitudes, larger waves in those particular spots. Now, on the other hand, at the same time, from the same little pebbles that were dropped in the pond, you guys, we can also have destructive interference right next to it, okay? So if you look right here, we have crest meeting trough, crest meeting trough, crest meeting trough, the whole way. So in between where all of these constructive interference is happening, where it's getting larger, right next to it, it's getting smaller or it's canceling out, okay? Depending on the size of the amplitudes to start with. But I wanted you to know that they could happen at the same time, just in slightly different locations, all right? So I hope this was helpful, you guys. Thanks, everybody. So if you still need help with the basics of waves, I have plenty of videos, you guys, describing all the basics for you. Go ahead and watch a couple of those, and hopefully it will help you out. Click that subscribe button so you can see all my new videos. Thank you all for watching. Bye, everybody.